The true story opens with a young girl, her mouth taped shut, confined within the trunk of a car, evidently abducted. To soothe her, she's referred to as baby girl. Amidst her distress, she discerns a distinguishing tattoo on the right hand of her captor. The narrative then shifts to 1994, a day before the abduction, focusing on Yun Jae, an 18-year-old Korean-American residing in New Mexico. She spends her day assisting her immigrant parents in their store. Later, she meets a friend to procure an ID, and her father surprises her with a ring as a graduation gift. One evening, while at a bar with her friend, they're treated to another round of drinks by Jesse, a young firefighter. Jay and her friend are intrigued and strike up a conversation with him. As the night progresses, and they grow closer, a car suddenly arrives, prompting Jesse's swift departure. Jay becomes apprehensive when she notices Jesse's fake firefighter badge and attempts to flee, but she's apprehended. Meanwhile, Marshal Bob Galt, on patrol, observes two men in a vacant lot and approaches them. He joined with another marshal, Ellis, and Mr. Alawa, the landowner where the young girl's body was discovered. Upon returning from his vehicle, Galt swiftly apprehends the two men. Jay found herself transported to a secluded area housing a warehouse, where she was injected with a sedative. There, her braces were removed, and she underwent a thorough bath while her kidnappers affixed a tracking anklet to her. Soon after, Bob, a corrupt law enforcement officer and the local head of a prostitution ring, arrived accompanied by Vaughn, his hot-headed and drug-addicted manager, who brought along cats to distribute to their girls. They were trailed by Svetlana, who led other women eager to tend to the felines. As they distributed the cats, Bob showcased the anklet worn by their missing acquaintance as a cautionary tale. Subsequently, Jay was formally introduced to Bob, who rifled through her personal effects. Bob made it clear that he possessed comprehensive knowledge of her identity and had gathered information about her life's circumstances. He bestowed upon Jay a new identity, Eden, and granted her a mere two days to acclimate to her new reality before she would be coerced into servitude. Before departing, Bob ominously warned Eden of his leverage over her parents, threatening harm should she refuse to comply. Eden endured the daily ordeal of pregnancy tests and drug injections, her body subjected to relentless manipulation. Then, one fateful day, Vaughn singled her out, along with her friend Priscilla, to be transported to a private studio. There, they were coerced into starring in adult films, a degrading experience that Eden found unbearable. To lift her spirits, Priscilla sang to her, offering a brief respite from their nightmarish reality. In her first assignment as a prostitute, Eden's desperation reached a breaking point. She lashed out against the client and made a daring attempt to flee, slipping out the back of the establishment in search of assistance. However, her bid for freedom was short-lived as she was swiftly apprehended once again. As punishment for her defiance, her hands were bound and submerged in an icy tub for the entirety of the night. Following this incident, tensions within the operation reached a boiling point. Bob confronted Vaughn, placing blame squarely on his shoulders for the operation's shortcomings, citing his addiction as the root cause. The confrontation escalated, culminating in Vaughn receiving a sharp slap across the face as a consequence of his perceived failure. After a year had passed, Eden had grown accustomed to life within the confines of the warehouse, and she and Priscilla had forged a strong bond. They delved into discussions about Svetlana's transition into Vaughn's assistant, and marveled at how effortlessly she acquired the ring bestowed upon her by her father. Priscilla was taken aback to realize that Eden was now nearing 19 years of age. She somberly imparted to Eden the ominous notion that girls often faced adversity upon reaching that milestone. Their conversation was abruptly halted by the arrival of Avni, a member of the syndicate. Avni forcefully separated Priscilla from Eden, leading to her sudden and mysterious disappearance. They conducted another operation, during which she caught the eye of an old, fatted man. This time, she performed her liveliest act to please the client. On the way back to the warehouse, she decided to remove the heel of her shoe and hid it in her private area. That night, she attacked Svetlana using the shoe's heel and attempted to forcibly take the ring from her until Vaughn and an enforcer arrived and intervened. As punishment for her actions, Vaughn forcefully made Eden swallow the ring. Following this, Eden volunteered to assist Vaughn with the operation, particularly in accounting, as she had noticed Vaughn was being cheated with payment collections, but he declined her offer. One night, Vaughn and Eden, accompanied by two other women, attended a college fraternity party. Following their services, Vaughn brought Eden along to assist him in collecting the full payment from the frat brothers. When they wanted to deceive Vaughn, Eden ensured the correct amount was tallied, ensuring they received the rightful payment. After coming to terms, 
he realized the two other women had disappeared, prompting them to swiftly depart, feeling uneasy. In the meantime, Eden spotted the fleeing women and managed to apprehend them. Upon their return to the warehouse, she headed to the restroom to retrieve her ring. From that point forward, Eden assumed Svetlana's role as Vaughn's caretaker. She was taken to his residence and instructed to clean the unkempt house. While there, she stumbled upon pictures of Vaughn, noticing he was accompanied by the firefighter she had met at a bar. As Svetlana's replacement, she was now responsible for handling client calls, receiving orientation on how to respond to inquiries, memorize codes, and was cautioned that queries about prices were likely entrapment. Additionally, she assisted with daily operations, including transporting the women, and received driving lessons. Despite her attempts to seduce Vaughn, he rebuffed her advances. Bob was observed leading a seminar on drug trafficking suppression. Following his address, he was approached by Detective Ron Greer, who questioned him regarding his presence at the location on the day Deputy Ellis disappeared, alongside Mr. Alawa, the landowner, as revealed by GPS records. Meanwhile, Eden received a call from a client arranging a service. Upon furnishing the necessary details, she was queried about payment. Eden discerned this as a potential entrapment tactic but proceeded with the booking without raising any concerns. Subsequently, Vaughn took charge of the booking and passed it on to Ivan for order delivery. The following day, Eden and Vaughn rendezvoused with Bob to dispose of the bodies in the nearby lake, including Svetlana's. Amid their conversation aboard the boat, Bob detected Vaughn's peculiar demeanor. And Vaughn inquired about the ongoing investigation into the disappearance of the deputy and the landowner. In the heat of their exchange, insulted by Bob, Vaughn abruptly turned on him, assaulting him until he lost consciousness. Following the assault, Vaughn disclosed that the directive to eliminate Bob came from higher authorities. Meanwhile, during a conversation with Ivan, Vaughn spontaneously invited her on a field trip, intending to accompany him in delivering a pregnant woman to the residence of a man named Mario, whom Eden recognized as the individual who had confined her in a car trunk destined for the warehouse. Excusing herself to use the restroom, Eden stumbled upon a chamber filled with baby cribs. Venturing into the adjoining room, she encountered Priscilla, heavily pregnant and unaware of the fate awaiting her child, which would be sold. Upon their return journey, Vaughn noticed Eden's subdued demeanor. Bringing the car to a halt, he urged her to divulge what she had witnessed inside Mario's residence, prompting her immediate confession. To demonstrate her loyalty, she was tasked with eliminating a woman in the desert. Just as she was poised to carry out the deed, Vaughn intervened, declaring that she had successfully passed the test. Subsequently, Vaughn received a call advising him to prepare for relocation. Upon reaching the warehouse, he discovered that one of his associates had betrayed the group, with Ivan being the prime suspect. Ivan was promptly handed over to Avni, potentially due to Eden's acceptance of the suspicious booking. Eden was tasked with gathering evidence and destroying it. The women were relocated to Vaughn's residence, where he disclosed their impending move to Dubai. Sensing this as her final opportunity to flee, Eden took action. While an addict occupied the bathroom, she clandestinely tampered with Vaughn's meth pipe, adding chemicals to render it lethal. Following a discussion with Vaughn, he immediately used the pipe, leading to his struggle for breath and eventual demise. Subsequently, Eden retrieved vaccines from the fridge and removed her tracking bracelet. Laden with cash, she ventured to Mario's house. There, Eden attempted to negotiate for Priscilla's freedom, but Mario refused. He admitted that he remembered Eden. However, Eden insisted on being allowed to see Priscilla, and Mario agreed to her request, accompanying her to the room. Seizing the moment, she swiftly administered a fatal injection to Mario, causing him to weaken and perish. Eden then discovered Priscilla, who had recently given birth, and revealed Mario's sinister plan to sell her baby, devastating Priscilla. They departed the premises together, swiftly leaving the area. Along their journey, Eden stumbled upon a payphone and contacted her mother, who was overwhelmed with joy upon hearing her daughter's voice after a year of absence. For more videos similar to this, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications. Thank you for watching.